Call the October 13, 2014, USD 350 Board of Education meeting to order. Welcome to the visitors. Welcome. Any additions or changes to the agenda? No. Okay. Entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Mr. President, I mean the board approves the agenda as presented. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries seven. <coughs> Your consent agenda. Um, Barb had a question by email about the uh, reimbursement for some mileage for Stephanie Smith. Uh, we try not to pay mileage if we don't have to. We've got the vehicles. There was one day she, uh, uh, we didn't have a vehicle. We had one in service and everything else out. So she had a required meeting at Pratt to go to. And then uh, because of that meeting, didn't make it back in time uh, to catch the bus. They drove to Bushton with her vehicle. So I uh, just wanted to explain that. Any other questions? Um, the budget also, the budget numbers there are uh, our working budget, not the published budget. Uh, so if you notice that some of those things are a little different, uh, that's why most of these are less than what's, what we've actually published. But So when you see those numbers here, if they don't match up, that's, that's why. That's the budget we work with. Thank you for that explanation. Yep. Anything else? Approve. Mr. President, I move the board approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Move and second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. All right. Opposed, nay. Motion carried, 7 0. Any patron comments tonight? Mrs. Dixon? No. Okay. <laughs> Business items, school resource officer. <coughs> At the last meeting, we asked Mr. Meyer to formulate a letter on behalf of the board addressed to the St. John City Council, letting our intentions known that we would be interested in entertaining some additional monitoring before school, after school, lunch hour, and at uh, board activities. Or not board activities, but school activities, ball games and whatnot. Did you all get a chance to read the letter, Mr. Martin? Mm -hmm. From the packet? Did it do any good? I haven't sent it. I oh. This is, oh. This is the letter it. presented to you all. To, if With consensus, I would just send this on behalf of the board. If we're all okay with that. Um, you know, Chief was looking at maybe cost, you know, perhaps the district sharing in some cost and having that person here most of the day. I just don't see that as... as uh, something we can uh, devote our resources to. Uh, you know, if we if we have money freed up for personnel, we probably should go somewhere else. Not that school safety is not important. It's just uh, we can still be safe and not have an officer here all the time. Would it be possible to pay it like on a per hour basis or something if? Extracurricular activities. If there's yeah. probably not money in the budget. Yeah. Really, the request I would think would carry some weight. That, yeah. You know, we would like some presence. There already is a presence. More regular. I mean, if the city needs, and I, you know, I don't live here, so I don't know. Obviously, you guys have some chases going on, or whatever. But. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice to get something. <laughs> time to time. So for I hope that they take the letter. I thought the letter got our point across to get what it is in the last thing. Okay. I'll give you direction. Yep. I will. Thank you for writing that. Mm -hmm. Vehicle report. Uh, we had discussed a little bit last month about our vehicles. I kind of clarified some of that. <coughs> the vehicle list. Um, bus number one. It says 35 slash 53 passenger. What does that mean? Well, for adults or 
big kids, it, it'll hold 35 people. Uh, it's a bench seat, so smaller passengers, little, little children, can, we can put three to a seat. So it would hold 53. Uh, bus number two is our big flat nose activity bus. Um, three, eight, 15, and 30, those are our route buses. Um, what we need to consider is, uh, I don't, I'm kind of waiting on our audit to be done so I know exactly where we are with our uh, capital outlay money before I make a firm recommendation, but we've got some options here. We need to replace one of our route buses. Number 15 is, is not reliable. Number 8 is on the verge of being not reliable, uh, both fairly high mileage, uh, nearing the end of their service life out of 25 years. Uh, we can go 25 years, but really once we get to you know, 15 or 20, that's about it. Uh, we're just dumping more money into them than we, than we should be. So a couple of options. We can replace uh, our smaller activity bus with a large, another large activity bus. Um, the next couple of years is probably not as big a concern. Uh, in past years, we haven't been able to fit all the junior high teams on our smaller activity bus. So if we had the high school basketball going uh, somewhere and junior high basketball going somewhere, we'd have to take another suburban just to get all the kids there. So on occasion, it would, nice, it would be nice to have two large activity buses. The next couple of years, we were so small in numbers in junior high, it doesn't really make sense to have uh, two large activity buses. And we use those for field trips and things like that as well, uh, which sometimes we run into conflicts. If, the big activity bus is on a field trip and doesn't get back till 3. We're leaving at 2 o'clock for a ball game. Uh, uh, the, uh, the other option would be just replace that number 15 route bus with, an, with another one of similar size. So there's a couple options that, uh, on our buses. Number 30 is nearing the end of its life. It's got some rust issues and runs okay, but we're getting close on that one. Um, our passenger vehicles, uh, I plan to keep number 25, uh, are the notes from, uh, that we talked about about a year ago. Uh, we were going to uh, replace, uh, replace 25 with the new Suburban or Expedition. It's not delivered yet, but it's on its way, and we'd get rid of number 25. I think we need to keep it as uh, we use it for uh, cross-country practice and we use it for golf practice, things that are close by, you don't know, send it out a lot of places. Number th 33 is one that we've been able to use in the past, but it's tied up all day, every day with special ed routes uh, and going to Barton County. So 33 and 34 we can't use during the day. Those are already tied up. So. My plan is to keep number 25 around, and really that's just an <coughs> insurance cost. That's all that's going to do. And then on the bottom, uh, the only concern there is our maintenance pickup. Uh, that little Ford pickup, it's well past its usable life. Uh, we really need to consider replacing that as soon as we can. Uh, we don't need anything fancy. Uh, just. Uh, just something to get us around, and so we're not asking David to use his pickup or Brent to use his. If you've seen that little blue pickup, it's it's done for. <laughs> it's served us beyond its usable life, so uh, we get a, a decent, a real good used pickup that lasts us for a long time for ten, fifteen thousand. I think. So. Any thoughts on <coughs> those? those items initially. I'll come back with a firm recommendation for you on the buses on what we need to be doing in the short term down the road. I'm just curious, how many routes are there in the morning? There is uh, four routes. We run, uh, uh, or sorry, three routes. We run two north and one south. <coughs> What is the status on the expedition? 
that have been kind of hung up? Yeah, it, it takes a long time with that state contract because okay. they don't build them until we order them. And uh, we are not a priority for them as the dealer. Uh, they uh, get to it when they get to it. It's always 90 to 120 days from the time we order it. So we're about at 120 now. So. And it'll still get 2014. Yeah. It's been built. It's in transit. I expect it any day we'll be picking it up. So. And we haven't paid for it. Grants. The maintenance pickup for that level of money, we could leave it up to Mr. Marsh's discretion to search for a good use to pick up. I'm be in favor of that because mm -hmm. you may have to act right away if the deal comes along. <coughs> Are you going to try like Purple Wave or something or just yeah. put it out there or, that we're looking? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, if you got stacked on right away. Then they'll take that. Yeah, so. Jimmy, Jimmy Green might be able to get something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that's that's nice. Nice. Would, uh, Do you need a motion on that? Maybe just to put a maximum on it. Uh, not to exceed price. And, uh, I think for 15000 or less, we could get something really, uh, that, would, that would more than cover it. Okay. Maybe closer to 10 or 12. But. I'll make a motion to buy a pickup up to 15000 at Mr. Meyer's discretion. Second the motion. So we have a second to uh, allow Mr. Meyer to search for a used pickup up to $15,000. Dollars of his discretion. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Those nay. Motion carried. 7 0. <laughs> then you get back to us on the bus recommendation. Yes. Yeah. In the meantime, if you have any questions or thoughts, let me know. Okay. Number three, superintendent evaluation. Forms are here in front of you. If you would, get these back to me by the 24th, that's the week from Friday. <coughs> and we'll, we'll go over at the next meeting. From here on, it'll be a, an annual evaluation, so the next time we'll be able to be from now. I will email that form to you. To yeah, that's what I was going to ask. That was the point line. Well, can we pull it? Back we probably can yeah. pull it off this year. Because you send it in the supporting oh, documents. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll send it like in a Word document where you can type okay. it. So Mr. Meyer will get that email now. Yeah. Okay. Junior High Girls Basketball. Uh, currently we have uh, <coughs> 10 girls signed up. 7th and 8th grade. Uh, for basketball, we've been we're short in volleyball, but we have 14, 13 or 13 in volleyball, so it's pretty short there, but we can make it work with our A team and B team. 10 uh, doesn't allow us to play full JV game um, with 10 kids. Uh, so what we're asking is that we include six graders on the uh, junior high team. <coughs> I think this is something we're going to have to to address in other sports and uh, likely volleyball next year. And uh, you know, the girls that we have three seventh graders signed up. Uh, I, I would guess there will be two sixth graders. So next year's team that will make five seventh and eighth graders. Uh, we're at a point I think where we shouldn't limit the coach on who plays the varsity and junior varsity. Just put them on the team and let them go. Let the coach decide that. If a sixth grader would play varsity, uh, I don't think we're going to have an issue with uh, that. What we run into is if we, uh, next year, if we have five kids, we won't have that choice uh, for basketball. You have five kids for seventh and eighth grade, uh, and we don't allow sixth graders to participate in the varsity games. You'll just have five kids, and that'll be it. There were times last year that Coach Garcia was limited a little bit. Uh, 
coach would like the sixth graders to be able to play varsity at his discretion. And I, I'm comfortable with that. And Mr. Burden is as well. I think the reason why we did it last year is because it was still, there was like 14 or something like that. Wasn't that one that 12? There was 12 junior high and 13 junior high. Yeah. So we had more numbers last year. Did you say seventh and eighth graders? Ten. There's twenty-two altogether, according to this. Mm -hmm. There's twenty-two females altogether. So ten. Oh, oh no, no, that's the elementary report there. I'm sorry. <coughs> well, no, she's looking at the junior high. She's looking at the high school report. Oh, oh, on the total numbers. Yeah. Just thinking 20, how many they're not showing out why they're not. There's 21 seventh graders. Yeah. yeah. But only nine girls. Yeah, there's only nine girls, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven. Maybe you got eighth graders too. 22, that's what I'm saying. And I would anticipate two sixth graders going out there. Mm -hmm. There may be one or two more. There may be one or two more seventh and eighth graders that decide they want to try it. But. Mm -hmm. Buck, what's our question here tonight to allow it for this year? Yeah, or to make it yes. permanent. Uh, I, I think for tonight, what I'm asking is that we allow sixth graders to play on the basketball team this year. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, a separate issue, I think we need to we need to be at a point. If we're going to allow this, um, uh, do, do we consider allowing it for track? You know, Coach Smith approached me about that. We want to get the kids involved a little early. Some schools do that um, just to get them involved in activities. Um, next year, I believe we're going to need seven, six graders to play volleyball and basketball uh, just to make it work, numbers-wise. Uh, this is allowed in every sport of football. Every sport of football. <coughs> included in your on your iPad, if you go back to the documents, there's two documents there, about sixth graders. Mm -hmm. what, what, I got a question on that. Yes. Here, it was on both of them, I think, but uh, this guideline seven, uh -huh. four, C1, what does that mean? Um, basically nothing. On the other document, if, uh, let me show you this one real quick. All of this uh, number number four. If we join the Kansas State Activities Association, which we do, we're a member, uh, then we participate under their rules. And I called on this last year to the State Department of Education, and uh, they said if you're a member of the Activities Association. You abide by their rules, forget about this other stuff. And that's what statement four says there. If you do not join, uh, I'm sorry, on the other document. That, yeah. And that, the other one is the one we're involved with? Yeah. Uh, Number four, local board of education may join the activities association and participate under its rules. If we if the Board of Education does not join that association, it shall comply with the guidelines adopted by the State Board. That's what all this other stuff is. It talks about six players <coughs> can only play one game a week. They can only practice for an hour and a half. They can only play so many games. So there's a lot of other stuff in those two documents. But the bottom line is, if we're a member of the Activities Association, we just include sixth graders just like seventh and eighth graders. Well, is that because a lot of middle schools are six, seven, eight. Yeah, and if you have a sixth grade team, uh, that uh, that would be different. We don't have a sixth grade team; it's it's a middle school team. So as long as we fit within the activities association rules, which we always will, 
what we do with the sixth graders is up to to this board, the school district as a policy matter. Well, I'm in favor of letting them play again, and Coach Garcia visited with me last year about letting him play who needs to play, and so you know, I'll go with whatever he needs to happen. Well, you got to can't see this. What are the sixth graders in the play for us? They're if they're on the team. Just let them play. I, I guess is my philosophy. If you're on the team and you're the you're one of the top five kids, uh, then you should start. I know that may cause some heartache if a sixth grader is starting over an eighth grader. Um, but in my mind, they're part of the team. You know, let them play just like any other player. But this would still be considered a year-to-year -year basis, though. Yeah, and I, th I think it, this spring we ought to try to make that decision on what we're going to do next year. If we're going to include sixth graders with volleyball next year and basketball, you know, they do some summer activities and including them with the team in the summer camp or the uh, summer activities, I think would be beneficial. Well, what do we do the boys do? I'm, I, the only thing is numbers. You know, if we end up with too many numbers, with so many kids that we have to hire an extra coach or it becomes a problem for practice or, uh, you know, if we have 35 kids out for basketball, it's tough to get, to get minutes. Yeah. And, and I'm really not opposed to looking at that. How many boys are there? I can understand where Bill's coming from. He's thinking that the, the the junior high is a learning process, and it is. It's just for and, fun. And right. the sixth grade, you know, it's not as competitive. I mean, sure, it shouldn't be. A lot of times it is, but to allow the, you know, allow the sixth grade. There. I don't know. Well, I'm against making it permanent because I can see uh, Kiowa County coming with 30 plus kids, and nobody gets to play any. And they have their games. What you know? What do you do with 32 or 34 kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that I becomes a that, that's just yeah, terrible. I, I agree with that. I think we should look at it as the as the season comes along. Look at it in enough time. To... Yeah, the only thing I can see a problem is, you know, these sixth graders maybe planning on playing with the team and then would pull the rug out. Well, they might have wanted to go play a summer league or something with another team or a fall league and the man missed out. So I think it should be like a two or three year deal at a time. So everybody knows. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well in the sixth grade that's a totally volunteer. Nobody has to know it's just mm -hmm. And we need to keep an eye on those kids. I mean it's different. They're not in junior high. They're you know they're still in the elementary and they're not, you know, it's tough enough for the seventh graders to get used to that, getting home late in the evening. And, uh, so we do need to watch that. I think if our administration thinks it's okay, that's what I think we I agree. Do we want to be boys? I, mean, I don't think if the, I don't think we should if the numbers aren't, if we have enough boys, I don't think we should. Here's the nine and the sixth grade. I don't. I recommend doing that with the with the girls now. So make it twelve, 12 and at least we can try to play a full JV game and get more minutes for those kids. With ten, it's not going to work. Maybe play half a game each time. With the boys, did you have sign up yet? If you had to get fifteen, fifteen. We've got solid numbers to fifteen. We are right. So in my mind, it's easy to justify why we're doing this for the girls and not for the boys. Uh, Mr. President, I'd move the board proof, including six graders on the junior high uh, girls basketball team for the year 14-15 season. Second motion.
Amendment seconded to approve, including sixth graders on the junior high girls basketball team for the 2014-15 season. Is there any further discussion? Not all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Nay. Motion carries 6 1. I'll put this on the future agenda item. We can revisit it if we want to try to look at something before the year is over. <coughs> Moving into next year with the limited amount of girls. Okay. Anything else? Sir? All right. Communications. Board member activities and reports. Start with Stan. Uh, well, I'm glad that the uh, baseball game got down. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have come. <laughs> what? The game come off? Josh about uh, see if we can get the I'll throw this out here and see if we can get the foundation education foundation together and maybe doing an auction and I don't know if you checked on that or yeah, not. I know you've been busy so I don't know what do you guys think to raise money what what are we auctioning whatever you want to do <laughs> okay. kind of like what Barton County does, and there's a lot of schools that do it. I know Trinity does it. You guys think that that would be a good idea? You could try it, sure. Maybe doing it during the alumni time in May. But anyway. Can you chair a question? No. Uh, but anyway, other than that, enjoy me watching the volleyball girls. And Hopefully they can keep improving and going forward. So, Tom, I don't have anything. I don't either. Um, the only thing I have is uh, attending the South Central Church Education Board meeting. I don't know. Administrative reports. Mr. Oliver, I've uh, got my attendance numbers at the top. Um, I had the Last month, it's kind of been a roller coaster in our building with kids coming and going. We've, on there, it looks like we've only like gained one, lost one, but really, we've there's been a couple grades where we've lost one and gained the kid the same grade. So we're actually up one student from last month. Um, 160 was the number we turned in for count day for our K6 head count. Uh, bike unit was a couple weeks ago, September 29th through October 3rd. Several community members helped with that. They had their rodeo that uh, Wednesday where they did <coughs> stations and things like that. Chief Sailor took them around town that last day. Um, or September 30th, 5th grade, took a field trip to Quivera for um, Stafford County Conservation Society Educational Field Day. It got a little wet in the morning, but the kids seemed to enjoy it. It went well. Uh, this Friday is the end of our first nine weeks. Um, we've got our elementary music program coming up the 28th. That's uh, two weeks from tomorrow, I believe. Um, and then I printed off, if you'll take one and pass that around. Um, student achievement data, you know, last year we talked that there was several issues with State assessments, um, you know, some schools didn't do them, some had lots of problems doing them. State's not even going to let us know how we do. So um, as, far, as far as measuring our kids um, on any type of test, state assessment, we don't have anything. But one thing we do with our kids is we give them what's called the Ames Web Test three times a year. We give it at the beginning of the year, uh, then towards the middle, and once again, near the end. Um, in the past, Danette Russell, who you know, used to do the Title I, she did the majority of this testing. She may come into a, a teacher's classroom and give them a math test or something. Uh, with her moving into the second grade uh, teaching position this year, that kind of gave that responsibility to the classroom teachers. So it hasn't got, gotten going as fast as it has maybe in years past, but 
If you look here, we do have most of the fall testing complete. In fact, all of it's complete, just some of it's not in the computer yet. But um, I'm not going to go over every single thing. But you look, kindergarten takes several different tests, like for instance, the OCM down at the bottom. Uh, I've coded what that is. It's oral counting and so on, just different tests they take. And then, for instance, for that one, the target score in the fall, they expect the student to get a 30. Now, that's not a 30%. That's 30 points. They have a grading scale. Um, you know, we had 14 out of 23 kids reach that goal. Um, if you look, <laughs> going across in the winter, they're expected to get a 57. Um, this is a national test, so it's, you know, these aren't numbers we came up with. This is based on national norms. Um, and then by the spring, they want these kids to be able to score a 70. So we want to see improvement in kids. So right now, you know, 14 out of our 23 kids were what we call on target for that particular test. Um, Basically what we want to see is as the year goes on and they take that test in the spring, we want to have more than 14 out of the 23. We want to increase that percentage. So um, kindergarten takes several, first takes several. Once they get to second through sixth grade, it, it's a lot more computation. The math, you know, in the, in the younger grades it's a lot of counting or, uh, <coughs> you know, they give you 11 blank, 13, you say what, what goes in, in the middle there. Uh, starting with second through sixth grade, there's a lot more computation, word problems, and some of that stuff. And then um, kind of reading, uh, uh, they go both for speed and for understanding. So they, they take a test where they just sit there and read to the teacher. And however far they get in a certain amount of time, it gives them a score. They answer questions, it gives them a score. So that's just there for your information. You can see in, in some areas our kids do pretty good and all, almost all of them are on target and there are, are some tests where, where our kids aren't. So that's one thing that uh, MTSS time our, our teachers are focused on maybe improving some of those things. You know, if, if we have several kids that struggle with concepts and application with word problems in second grade or something, maybe they, you know, in small groups spend time working on that so that, that by the end of the year we'll have a higher percentage of those kids. So um, that's just there for your information. I can answer any questions you have over that. Um, <coughs> like I already talked about, September 23rd, that was our uh, enrollment day. Um, 160 was our K6 headcount on that day. Site council met, uh, been a couple weeks now, October 1st, talked about various things that went well. And we have parent teacher conferences coming up two weeks from today. So we'll talk about their first nine weeks of progress. Any questions for Mr. Allen? Thank you. Mr. Berger? Yes. Um, enrollment for is up for 712. Um, I have on there uh, 165. The um, down there at the toward the bottom there where I have 912 enrollment um, on the administrative part. The 912 enrollment is actually in the building it's 113. We have five students who uh, they they go to the learning center. Their class hasn't their cohort class hasn't graduated yet. Um, so they are actually we have a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, and two seniors. That if they were in our building, they'd be <coughs> grades. But they go to the learning center. So that's why they're and so, so they are uh, classified as whatever we have them lined up in those grades instead of learning center students. Um, and you know, um, we have, without them, we have 22 students, or 22 uh, students, 27 students and adults total in the learning center, but five of them are high school age. So that's how that, just make sure that's, so they actually 160 are in the building. So, um, you can see by the grade breakdown what they are. Um, um, our building goals, which we developed the last spring for our building, were, uh, just a reminder, we have student achievement, that, um, and some of that's based on some of the things with the state assessments, and some of those that hasn't been set or defined completely yet, the state assessments, those are evolving. Um, we have uh, using increasing use of technology in the classroom to enhance learning, and another building goal is school culture, climate, uh, to, to uh, increase that. So we're continuously working on those things. I've been talking about that every time we have any easy to get a chance. Um, you'll see on the ACT, there should be a chart that you guys got, yeah. Um, as you guys know, all, some of your students, your, some of your own children have already taken that, but you can see um, since 2010, 
you can kind of look on the chart at the top. You can see uh, 2010, 11, 12, 13, and last year's graduating class. You can see the state, um, and you can see uh, our district, the score. And obviously, you don't follow every class all the way through. These are different classes each year. So some of that is going to depend on the uh, kids that are taking those tests. Okay, so you know, it's not like it's every, it's just different ones each year. Uh, you can see last year, um, we had English, we were above the uh, state average, math we were, reading we were way above it, science, the composite, so the composite is a uh, averaging them together, and you can see uh, those are, the, and, and other years, uh, not in 2011, 22 in English, they're above the average, or right close to the average in the state, and you can see the number of uh, kids who took the uh, test each year in the state of Kansas. And the, the ACT, you know, it stands for American College Testing, which some of you probably already know that. And you can, um, the English, that are these universities have benchmarks where they kind of set down there, where they set for kids to score. And uh, scholarships and financial aid are based on how kids score uh, on the ACT. As you know, 36 is the highest score you can get on an ACT test. Not a lot of kids get a 36 because that'd be perfect. So, you know, we I think we've had, since I've been here, we had a young man, get it, somebody got a 33, somebody might have got a, somebody might have had a 35, I can't remember, the Holman, kid, the Holman boys, I think, were in the, in the low to mid 30s. And so uh, it's really, you uh, can be extremely smart, but in a test, some kids test better than others, and these tests are timed. And so last year, um, I think there were, in 97, there was about 960,000 kids took the ACT in the, in the country. And last year, in 2000, or 2013, almost a million eight took the ACT. So it kind of just jumped <coughs> up just ahead of the SAT as far as the college uh, placement test. But a, a test, for example, um, in English, there are 75 questions, and you have 45 minutes to answer those questions. Math, there are 60 questions. You have 60 minutes to answer um, in the, that amount of time. So things are timed, and so there's a lot of questions, and it's difficult. So um, anyway, I just that's just some information um, about ACT, and we have a number of kids. You know, and you know. Kids and freshmen can take it, sophomores, you can take it as many times as you'd like. But a lot of our junior and seniors obviously take it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Anybody have any questions really? <coughs> uh, Pratt College Fair, Mrs. Hacker took uh, all our seniors on October 1st, uh, that's the afternoon, just to go through the vendors, talk a little bit about uh, future things with colleges. Um, Red Ribbon, we decided to combine the Red Ribbon and Spirit Week this week because homecoming's on Friday, so we kind of combined that with FCCLA and the cheerleaders. Um, school pictures are tomorrow, like uh, your picture taken. I'm coming in early and put them on there. Um, Postseason, you're all aware, uh, tennis went to South Barbara last Friday. Uh, volleyball is going to go to Spearville on the 25th. Cross country will be in Mead. Uh, parent teacher conferences are on the 27th, as already been mentioned. Anybody has any questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Berger. Thank you, Mr. Berger. Thank you. Mr. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff here for you. Um, professional development, we've got a meeting coming up here a week from today. A half a day of teacher work day at the end of the nine weeks, and then we'll have some professional development time. Uh, we're going to be working in committees for that, uh, focused on five areas school safety and school climate. That's a goal of this board and on our building uh, goals. Uh, technology would be another committee. Uh, again, one of the focus uh, areas for this board and our building plans. Uh, career and college readiness facilities and then just general student achievements. So we've got five committees kind of, uh, we're going to do some work, try to get a little more input from our staff on some of those issues uh, rather than just tackling those at the administrative level. So uh, we'll spend some time doing that. 
Uh, Mr. Alden mentioned the district leadership team and our site councils met uh, recently. Um, we'd like to get to the point where we're getting more input than sharing information. Uh, so that's been a, been a challenge, but we'll keep working at that. Uh, I did include the community <coughs> survey in your packet starting on page 29. I won't go through all of this, uh, I'll bring up a few things. This is a survey they give uh, every year, 6th, 8th, 10th, and 12th grade. Uh, measures a lot of different things. Uh, uh, most kids are honest. Some some kids don't treat it very seriously, but uh, it, it gives us some pretty good data, I think. Uh, they go through things like uh, the protective data is what they call it. Uh, uh, so they, they ask different questions that would lead them to, you know, the second one on their opportunity for family involvement in our community, in our school. Uh, you know, 74 percent of our kids report positively that there's opportunity for family involvement compared to 59 percent of the state. One thing we notice about all these were higher than the state average, which is good for this, these things. Uh, community rewards for positive behavior. So we like to see that. Uh, the risk data is, uh, you can see those, uh, drug use and uh, by students in the community, uh, gang involvement, things like that. Uh, most of these were, were less than the state average. Uh, the third one down is perceived availability of drugs. Uh, we're higher than the state average. Uh, why is that? I, I don't know. Those are some of the questions we have to answer. Um, you know, risk of drug use is a lot lower than the state average. So, is this information coming from the students? Yes, from the students. Yeah. So the one that bothers me is the parental attitude favorable towards drugs. It's pretty high. So that means a lot of kids are living in homes that parents are showing them drugs are not bad, I guess. And some of that we look at too is compared to the, the state average. Cause a lot of that, what does that really mean? We can drill down and I can find the questions that are asked for those categories and see. No, but cor you know, if you correlate it with the perceived availability of drugs. Yeah, no, I agree. That's it is a concern. That's a scary all of that. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the laws and the norms favorable to drug use is pretty high, too, I think, for being a small community. So, does that mean our. Yeah, I don't, I, I can't, I, I mean, there's, there's, you can try to draw some conclusions. It's good data to, to, to kind of know. And we'll use some of this in the building uh, goals. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those things we can control directly, and some of them we can maybe have an effect on, and some of them we can't control at all. What about community disorganization? I, I don't know. I, I would have to look at the questions they ask related to that. Hmm. What, grades, what grades take this? Sixth, eighth, tenth, and twelfth. Last <coughs> year we didn't get the communication happen with Travis being new. We didn't have sixth graders do it for some reason. So last year's data just uh, uh, eighth, tenth, and twelfth. Uh, typical years we include sixth graders. Then there's some uh, use data for drugs and alcohol and cigarettes. Uh, you know, for example, with cigarettes, the positive is that from two years ago to last year it went down and considerably less than the state average. But marijuana went up. Marijuana went up. <laughs> and you know, things like that uh, are a concern. Uh, some of this could be skewed a little bit like not having the sixth graders in this survey data. Uh, or some not being honest, playing yeah. with the, playing the game. So, take it for what it's worth, but it's good, again, it's good. Uh, and alcohol use, and prescription drugs. So a positive is that nearly all those are less than the state average. Uh, bullying data. Uh, some positives and some concerns, but 
during the school year, how, how often have you been bullied? In, in two years, it went up quite a bit, and it's higher than the state average. And we'll find the more we talk about it, the more it's reported. Well, on that very back one, it says report to the teacher. They did it more last year than they're doing this year. So what's, why, do they feel that they're not being heard, or? I, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Might be. So what do, what do people do? What do the adults do? Or if you saw bullying, what would you do? High percentage of our kids say they would do something. Uh, and probably the most important one that we can really control is what do adults do when they see bullying. So. I did want to share that with you. I don't have any firm conclusions to draw out of that, but uh, we've all got our guesses. Of, uh, but anyway, areas to improve and areas to be aware of. So, um, I'm going to share that with you each year. Um, on the administrative part, some state funding challenges. Uh, page 38 on your report there. <laughs> this comes from the Kansas Le Legislative Research Department. This is this is the legislature. This isn't. Uh, uh, partisan group uh, in an election year trying to paint a bad picture. The picture is blue. Um, those are the facts. I be accused of being political with that, but um, what's happening here? What's that? You've been messing with commercials? Oh, I, yeah. I, I, okay. I can't even say how many offices President Obama is running for. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll stick to the facts here. Uh, these, what we're looking at here, I know it's kind of small, the actual budget year 2012, 11-12, uh, 12-13, and this will be last year's budget year. Their state's budget year is the same as ours, July to July. Uh, this is the ending balance in million, 530 million, 709 million, and 380 million. Uh, that we ended the year last year. Uh, this is the concerning part, is at the end of this year, it's at 29.4 million. That's only a half a percent of the state's ex uh, expenditures for the year. The statutorily required amount is 7.5 percent. Now they don't always stick to that, but it's in statute that they need to have 7.5 percent of the budget. Uh, is an ending balance. This this is gone already. The estimates from July through September are down by 21 million. So that lowers this number by 21 million. Uh, that's a concern. What does that tell me? The state has no money. And unless things turn around quickly, immediately, I don't know how they would, uh, that means bad things for the state budget. I, I would not be surprised if we saw a cut in our budget in the middle of the year. They set base state aid at $3,852. I don't know how they can pay for everything. We're already robbing the transportation fund to pay for education. Uh, perhaps they could rob it further, um, but when we don't have an election coming up, uh, you know, the election will be done. People will be voted into office. They'll have tough decisions to make. I, I don't know how we get around that. Um, that's a concern. Next year, what's anticipated is there's a $238 million hole to fill. That's what they need to cut out of the budget to get back to zero. Then they need to get to 7.5% about that just to have the ending balance. So that's a serious, serious concern uh, with our budget moving ahead. Any questions about that information there? Um, the 20 mil uh, tax levy that we have in the, uh, you know, we levy 20 mils for our general fund. 
if you recall, they changed the state law where that no longer comes from the county to the school district. It goes from the county to the state. Mm -hmm. And then they pay that out as, as state aid. Um, Money-wise, to our district, it means nothing different. It won't be a dime different. Uh, in past years, last year, we collected this many dollars in that 20 mils, our local taxes, <coughs> and our general fund budget is this. The state would pay us the remainder of that amount. They would make that. Amount. The only difference now is all of this will be considered state aid. We won't have local dollars and state dollars. It will all be coming from the state. Now, cash flow-wise, that does present a little bit of a problem. Uh, things aren't so tight for us that we need to worry about uh, 10 days, but the tax check was due to us, who in a typical year would have been due to us on September 20th. But we didn't get our state aid until October 1st. So you know, there's, a, there's a lag there of about 10 days that, that we don't see that money, and normally we would. Uh, in January, it will be the same thing. January 20th, we're due, set the right date. January 20, we will be due to get our large tax check. Well, we won't get that. We'll get that spread over February, March, and April. Uh, so we need to be aware of that cash flow-wise, which is a problem. Um, it's just different than we're used to. Money-wise, we'll get the same amount. Uh, and people will claim... There's a lot more state aid coming to school districts than there ever has been. And it's not a dime different. Uh, so be aware of that. Uh, uh, Lisa Milton asked us if we would separate out uh, just to make sure we got our local tax dollars uh, and account for that. You can't do that. The state doesn't do that. They take the money, it goes into one pot, and they send it as state aid. That's it. Uh, we will get all of our money. We will get, we will get more in state aid than we get in tax. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the there's been a lot of talk of efficiency, and some of these things I think I have sent you. Um, one one area that that people point to is schools being inefficient is they have all this money sitting around. I'm sure you've heard that. We've talked about this a number of times. There's a lot of numbers on page 39. The goal is two months worth of expenditures. And all of this together, the, the green amount on the left is about two months worth of expenditures for the year. So on the right, the recommended amounts, that column, so 630 is the target number for us, for our operational dollars. We have some that's not operational, and bond and interest, and capital outlay, uh, activity fund, and some of those things. Uh, that's the target number, is that 630000 Right now, the other circled amount there, up on the, uh, the top one in blue, is what we have available for operations. So, we don't have too much money. Um, now, we can consider now capital outlay, we can use some of that for operational expenses. Uh, so that does help out a little bit. Uh, it's not just, it's not so limited anymore. So really that 351,000, we can kind of consider that a little higher with our capital outlay for operational dollars. So. Uh, the page 40 is another area. <coughs> I went back to 2008-2009, excuse me, our staffing levels, what's happened with our staff numbers, what's happened with our student enrollment, free and reduced lunches, and our main operating funds, local option budget and general fund. You can see our staffing levels, the total numbers from this year to this year are down about 27 percent. That's significant. Our student enrollment has gone down about 9%. So we whittled away our staff a lot more than we have our student enrollment. Does that mean we've just been socking away the money? 
and just cut all this staff so we could hang on to all that money and be not efficient? No. <laughs> There's our end of year cash balance. And I only had this back to 2010. <coughs> but you can see it's steadily gone down. This is our operational fund. This is our total cash balance. So we've whittled down our staff more than we have our student population, and we're still losing money. Uh, this big drop looks very concerning. That's due to our bond payoff. So it's not a. It's not like we just threw a bunch of money out the window there. And there's those graphs that kind of show some of that, uh, those numbers. Another thing to consider about all this: what is, what have we done with our expenses over that time? It's gone down about 13 percent. Inflation over that same period is 11, so we're going the wrong way. You, know, you would expect our expenses maybe would go down with our enrollment. That's not unreasonable to assume that if you were your kids, you're going to spend less than them. And our free and reduced lunch uh, population has gone up quite a bit. Now, to be fair, when we look at this, this number, it tells us something, but it's not really fair to just take a snapshot. Because you notice this number is actually higher. So it's been higher than, than it was. You, know, you take a low point and a high point and find that percentage. It looks like a large percentage uh, increase. And it was, but there's been other times where it's been higher. Any questions about those two things related to efficiency? Do you think our ending cash balance is stabilizing? Yes. Yes. And uh, next month, uh, we should have our audit report done and have those final numbers. Okay. Uh, based on preliminary unaudited numbers, yes, it's it's not decreasing quite as fast. So I started with the bad news. And we'll end with the good news here. Um, our enrollment and budget update. Uh, Mr. Burton and Mr. Olive went through some enrollment numbers. I've got them here. A lot of numbers. I apologize. I'm, I'm a math guy, so I look at a lot of numbers. This is last year's numbers and the FTE that we get from each one of those. Kindergartners count as half, unless they're special ed, then they count full. Preschoolers, we just count them if they're special ed. So that's why some of this is different than this. But everybody else, we really just count. One head is one FT. Here's the numbers for this year. If you're curious, out of here, in kindergarten, last year to this year, they lost two. So, so most grades growing up. So our K-12 count, Mr. Bergen mentioned those five high school age kids that are at the Learning Center, I went ahead and pulled them out. So at the Learning Center, we have 27 kids in the building. Uh, K-12, last year we were at 315, this year we were at 320. So you see in, in a lot of grades we added kids. <coughs> it's not just one specific area. Uh, that's a good thing. The averages, you see they're still lower average in our elementary than we are in the upper grades, which means you know, eventually we may be losing enrollment if things stay the same. Our K-12 enrollment, here's the increase in the last four years, what, what that has done. So forgetting about the learning center enrollment. So what does that mean? Oh, here's a couple more graphs just to kind of show you what's happened with our head count over the years and what's happened with our free and reduced lunch population. So more numbers. What does all that mean for our budget? <coughs> For our enrollment, this is what we had last year, this is what we have submitted this year. So we're up 14 and a half over here on the right. And let's see that check, we're up 14 and a half, what does that mean in dollars? 
for each area. We get enrollment for low enrollment. Uh, these are all the weightings we have for kids in vocational classes. We added a pathway for biochemistry. It's a big part of this. We have more kids in our career and technical education classes. Uh, bilingual is down a little bit. Um, free meals is actually up a little bit. I expected this to be the big chunk that we lost. Had we not gained enrollment, this is where we would have taken it. None of the students over 19 years old qualify for at-risk dollars. Um, I think there's some confusion there. They, we don't count them as free lunch because we don't serve them a lunch. But it's not, the dollars aren't for lunch, it's for at-risk services. But anyway, that law had changed. Uh, if you recall, I was expecting our budget to be down about $30,000. This was in the area that we would have lost most of that, these three at-risk numbers. So we lost a little bit there, but not much. We're transporting more kids. So again, over here, what does that mean in dollars? For career and technical education, this one was bilingual. Lost a little bit, and so on. So the bottom line is, <coughs> be kind of small up here. This is on page 43 on your, on your report. <coughs> this is our weighted enrollment, all those numbers added together. Where were we at last year? <coughs> Where are we this year? Base state aid went up $14. We have more kids. We have more weightings. What does that mean to our budget? $112,700 more in our budget. That green line, I expected that to be down 30. Uh, and I budgeted high. Uh, special education state aid, that's money in, money out. I padded this a lot. This does not mean we're getting an extra 75000 That's not what that means. So I didn't figure that into how much more we're getting. It just comes to us, to the co-op. Um, all this other stuff, uh, I'm not going to really go over, but then our local option budget is 102000 more. So those two things, we knew this. We knew where this was going to be. This is a huge difference in what I expected for our budget. Um, and nearly all of it has to do with that top row right there. The number of kids we have really affects our budget. So down at the bottom, I didn't include heating costs and, and food costs and uh, you know fuel prices at the pump. You know, th there's things that'll be up and things that'll be down. But some big expenses I know about. We know our special ed assessment was going up by $30,000. We know between uh, salaries um, and uh, our, you know, adding the aid position back. Uh, we have those added costs. These increases in our budget from up there. And then we saved about 50000 by not filling out of our teaching position. So the difference is 160,000 in the positive. So that's that's huge. That's uh, very encouraging. Um, but back to our uh, my fear of seeing the seeing the budget cut mid year. I'm, I am very worried about that. Um, also consider we we still have been losing cash. Uh, so it's not like we can run right out and hire a bunch of teachers. Uh, but this is definitely a step in the right direction. Um, having more kids really affects the budget. Any questions about that? The budget stuff there? I have a question. <clears throat> On the ESL bilingual, is that the actual students that are classified under that? No. No, that's the, based on the minutes. The well, I know when you said talk, getting rid of Title I, that gives us the kind of leverage to count more minutes because more teachers will be seeing that, but it caused a loss. I thought it was going to add a little more revenue. I don't, Do you, under, you don't follow what I'm saying? No, it, it's just based on the number of minutes that a teacher is with, a, with an ESOL endorsed teacher. Oh, okay. Really, Title I won't really affect that much, if at all. I was just thinking that there is something <clears throat> not having that pull out those teachers would have them for more minutes that would add a little more revenue. Did, uh, 
the net was the net's ESL certified too, so when they were pulled out with her, they were still getting yeah. ESL. Okay, yeah. maybe I misunderstood this. Okay, so we need more teachers to get ESL. Uh, yeah, we have quite a few, really. Uh, we do. Uh, That's the cost a lot. You know, the one concern here is, uh, you know, more kids is a good thing. Uh, you look at some of those numbers, you look at our first grade class, that's 28. Um, we have two teachers in first grade. That class moves on to, first, to second grade. We put 28 kids in one of those classrooms. That's, it, it's, it's cramped with fewer than that. How many did you start out with last year? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. That's cramped. That's I mean, uh, um, it's full. And you know, a few years ago we had twenty-nine in kindergarten, and I think we had twenty-two the following year, twenty-three, something like that. So things can change, but we're um, we're kind of at that that level of twenty-five kids. There's a lot in one class, but. You know, 12 is not very many. And if we could afford to put 12 kids in every class, that'd be, that'd be ideal. Uh, but anyway, that, with the added numbers, that is a concern. Something we may have to find a way to address. Uh, the annual convention, I and mean, then information, and the <coughs> annual convention, if you'd like to pursue this. Uh, I plan to go to have a superintendent's day. Uh, so which tar is it, it, It's in Overland Park. Mm -hmm. It's on the December uh, 5, 6, and 7. Friday is the 5th, so really the 6th and 7th are the main activities. So if you'd like to see that, if you're interested in going, um, <clears throat> let me know if you have questions about it. Um, a few things I didn't have on my list there. The library heating and air, you're going to finish up the boilers and have them going tomorrow. Uh, so we will have heat if we need it. Um, they'll finish up the refrigerant line plumbing. That's almost all done. Um, and then they'll need to tear into this area and we'll finish that up in the community room. But uh, we're still a few weeks away uh, from getting that all done should be able to shut off the air conditioners not have to worry about that uh, hopefully after this week uh, so anyway we'll, we'll be up and running for heat if we need it and, uh, so we're getting there it's moving slower than I expected but we're paying accordingly so um, <clears throat> board policy book we have this back I'm uh, I'm about 20% of the way through, maybe a quarter. Uh, we'll go we'll through that. Um, they've been through it, you know, the, the attorneys at KSB, and uh, this is had electronically. We can search it. So uh, if you have a policy, you're not sure what our policy is on this, you can just on your computer search for a word and then pull up that policy. Uh, we can put that on our website. People know what our policies are. So. So the goal here would be, uh, after I go through it, uh, uh, meet with uh, KSB folks and they can answer my questions and I can bring it, uh, bring it all to you for, for approval. A lot of them don't need a full review, um, but some of them are really need to talk about, so I'll have to bite it off in little chunks. So. Um, the south wall over by our new office, if you noticed, uh, uh, Darlene Banky painted a mural there. Uh, it looks pretty sharp. Same thing that's on the north side. Um, makes that area pretty attractive. Uh, I'll be attending some job fairs at Emporia State and uh, Northwest Oklahoma uh, State here in the coming weeks. Uh, we don't formally have a math position open, but we might uh, for next year, so we want to be on top of that. Uh, Talk to Mr. Wood, and he's not made a decision yet, but he understands we need to be talking to some folks. So he said, yeah, just talk to people if you need to, and 
I'd like to keep them around a few more years. But see if we can get that done. Um, next week, I'll have a council superintendent's meeting and the, the whole efficiency discussion at committee. We have a meeting on that as well. That's uh, all for my report. Thank you. <coughs> Executive session items. Personnel. Who we need in session? Um, it's Mr. Bergen. And I think, I think we'll be done with Mr. Elder. Excuse me, Mr. Elder. Yeah. Go home, Jim. Unless anybody needs him for anything. <coughs> no arguing. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll start with, we'll go with 20 minutes. <coughs> need a break? Okay. We'll be taking a five minute break. Can I do a motion? Mr. President, I move. But the board will be exactly second as personnel matters in order to <coughs> try to see non elected personnel with Mr. Bergen to be included and Mr. Meyer. And uh, we return to open session 20 minutes in this room after a five minute break. Second. Third second, if you want executive session on all this personnel matters with Mr. Bergen and the board, may return to open session in 20 minutes after a five minute break. Favorite. Uh, 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 motion carries. Shorter. Yep. Yeah. yeah I would recommend uh, Jamie Walker as the assistant coach for junior high girls basketball for this year. Mr. President, I move the board approve Jamie Lawfer as assistant coach for junior high basketball for 2014-15. Second. <coughs> Moving second to hire Jamie Lawfer as the junior high assistant girls basketball coach. For this year. All in favor, aye. Aye. Those nay? Motion carries. 7 0. Uh, my boys. Basketball. Uh, Mike Bergen. Mike Bergen is recommended for junior high boys. <coughs> Head coach. Mr. Mr. President, I move to the board approve Mike Bergen as a uh, basketball coach for the junior high boys. Second now. Moving seconded, uh, Fire Mike Bergen as a junior high head basketball coach for this year. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries, 7 0. Congratulations. Uh, Scholars Bowl will sponsor. That would be Andrea Sailor Seed Keys and Felicia North will split that. Mr. President, I move the board approve Andrea Sailor Safety and Felicia Norton is sponsored for the High School Quiz Bowl for 2014 15. Second. Move and second is to hire Andrea Safety and Felicia Norton for the Scholars Bowl sponsors for the 2014 15 school year. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 7 0. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the second on that last motion. Stand. Stand. Anything else come before the board? Second. 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 Second.